Hey guys, welcome to Blue Shaded. Welcome to another video. And Barcelona 2, Dinamo Kiev 1. And it's another one of those days. Sort of really video, guys, but I was at work and I had to watch the game. And boy, oh boy. Uh, what can I say? This was between bad, very bad, or just absolutely horrific, what I just saw. And it's very worrying. It's very worrying, but at the same time, it's not surprising. I don't want to, you know, you know, hang medals, like, and say I, I said so, but I did say so. I saw a lot of people, especially to like a lot of people that I know, were saying, thinking that Kuman, you know, he is Dutch. He, you know, he was in the dream team, on the, all this kind of stuff. That he was gonna bring back the best Barcelona. That he was gonna get the best out of Messi. That you know that we were gonna be seeing a much more improved Barcelona. And this is not me blaming on Kuman by any means. He's not in an easy situation. He's not simple because it's a very very difficult situation and I don't know what's going to happen until the end of the season but for me with this game and the game against Alaves we're putting in a really tough spot because yes we won today but the problem is that things haven't changed really like we're playing on information we have a, a few of new, a couple new faces, but the result at the, at the end of the day, the execution at the end of the day, is basically the same. When we have to face the big teams, when we have to face a team that's not Juventus in transition, when we have to face a team that is not Dinamo Kiev but someone with infinitely better players that know what they're playing at then that's when you're going to receive another smacking in the Champions League. I have no doubt that we're going to go past the, um, past the group stage. But then whoever we meet, if they're half decent, we're going to struggle. And it's going to be a very, very big problem for us. But let's talk about the items and then we'll go ahead and talk about the game. Barcelona to start with Marc and the in it. With Jordi Alba, Frankie de Jong, Gerard Piqué, Serginho Dest, in midfield with Sergio Busquets and Milan Pjanic, the three number 10s in Lionel Messi on the right, Pedri on the middle, and Fati down the left, and up top, Anton Griezmann. While Dinamo Kiev have to go with Ruth and Nesheret in net, Ketsura, Samir, Popov, Shabanov in defense, Eidol Fevon in Andrzejewski and Chepelev. Three number tens in Gerson Rodriguez, Bujelski, and Victor Singakor. Then the right wing. And up top, Victor Supreja. Alright. Uh, Dinamo Kiev. I saw the declarations that Lepescu said, the um, Dinamo Kiev uh, manager said about Barcelona that. This Barcelona is not able to win the Champions League. And there's a lot of people saying that. How can he say that? What a disrespect to Barcelona. Like, no. He's saying something that's completely true. Like, I can't get mad about it. I can get, I can be mad that he's right. Because she should not be right. Because we are Barcelona. And these people that have been in charge of the club for the past X amount of years... Have, have turned the best team in history, or one of the best teams in history, into the team that you're seeing today. Into a team that has no cohesion, that has no sense of organization, of order. Because the problem is, between attitude and order, the problem is, some people say that the, the attitude is bad. Yes, partly that's right. The attitude is, is I mean, the attitude is wrong. And yes, the attitude is wrong. But attitude also 
conveys with style of play. And the problem is that it's we've been losing that new hope in the because in the air, during preseason in the first three games of the season, Barcelona were playing, you know, fairly decent. They were moving with the ball fairly decent. It was, you know, going at a very good speed. And now we're just seeing that we are losing that. We're losing that movement because the players are stopping. Like they don't believe, or they seem to not be believing in what's going on. And that is a problem because they don't. They cannot get into the in, into this new roles that Kuman wants them to, and it's not Kuman's fault. Like I said, Kuman has a really tough spot. And by the way, just deviating very very little about in, about the topic of this game. People criticize Setien that we did badly. If it was up to me, I said I would keep Setien. I would keep Setien. And seeing what I've been seeing right now, we would have saved money instead of having to pay Setien. And at least we were, we will be seeing the youngsters. I would guarantee that at least I'll be seeing Ricky Puig. Because today's game is a confirmation for me. The last game was already a warning sign. But this game for me, it's kind of the confirmation. That my thoughts on the season were right. The best that Barcelona probably can hope for. And at least for me, I'm going to be okay about if we just qualify for the Champions League. Just guarantee the top four, which right now doesn't look so likely, but hopefully they are going to be able to get into a dynamic of winning a couple games and we will be able to establish ourselves in the top four. There's not that many strong challengers that are in high gears right now because Sevilla has started horribly the season. Valencia is Valencia. Granada has been doing pretty well, but we'll see if they can keep that up between La Liga and Europa League and then Copa del Rey. Let's say they have started very well. You have Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid. And then there's that spot to be taken. Who maybe can be Villarreal and who knows. But Barcelona have a chance to qualify for the Champions League. And have a strong chance to qualify for the Champions League. That's the most that we can hope for. Because winning La Liga is going to be next to impossible. Because we're already six, what, what is it? Eight points down with one game in hand. So we're at, at most or at least... Five points down. How many matches has it been? Six? Five? Something like that? Five or six matches in, and we are five points down at the very minimum. That means, and I only say that because I'm not saying that five points is, you know, that we cannot overturn five points, a five point deficit, especially against an Atletico Madrid that's trying to, you know, change a few things and be the best version of itself and then a Real Madrid that's well we know what Real Madrid is a team that's super inconsistent that wins wins games sometimes very very oddly in a very very oddly manner with you know some some calls from from the top that is very very weird sometimes but sometimes they're able to get points and defensively they're much more solid than Barcelona they can score a goal to save the rights, but they're much more solid at defense at Barcelona, for the most part. With that said, the problem that I see right now in La Liga is that Barcelona need to start winning games, and I mean win consistent, win consistent games. Like, get into a dynamic of at least, you know, are the next 10 games in La Liga, win the next 8, or something like that, for us to get back into track. In this competition. Do you see that? Because I don't. I surely don't. There's no way. There's no way. There's too, way too many teams that can cause us troubles. We're playing Betis up next. Who will see what's going to happen. There is, you know, we have to play against Atletic. Who is always a trouble team for us. We have to play against Atletic in Madrid. Uh, who else? We have to face Re- La Sociedad. Real Sociedad. Like, we have a ton of games where we can lose points. And, you know, if the team starts seeing themselves down, they're probably going to stop believing and their heads are going to turn down and then it's going to be worse and worse and worse. With that said, the game today was absolutely horrendous because there's no sense of positioning. Some players are trying to press and they're pressing out of order and some players are not pressing. And the problem is that either 
all of you press or none of you press. Because the problem is, if some players press and others don't, you leave a massive gap of space and the opponent can take over you. This Dynamo Kiev team was in a situation much more similar to the one that Shakhtar was against Real Madrid. That Shakhtar team that put Real Madrid 3-0 down by half time. I'm not kidding you that Ter Stegen today was spectacular. Thank you Ter Stegen. Again. But I hate having to highlight that our highlight of the game has to be our goalkeeper. And yes, if Ter Stegen was in El Clasico, maybe we win the game. If Ter Stegen was against Alaves, maybe we win the game. But that's not here or there. It's not that Neto is a bad keeper. He's a good keeper, but Ter Stegen is in another level. Now, why is it that it always has to be Ter Stegen to save us and Messi to win us the games? I'm hating this dynamic because Messi, the problem is that he only scores goals from penalties right now because there is no support to getting the ball to him. And Kuman, I've I've heard these rumors and I've he- I've heard that you know there is people around the Ricky Pooch, like the Ricky Pooch surroundings that he doesn't like and that's why he doesn't play in Ricky Pooch. And some people say that's because he doesn't defend uh, or because he's very you know very brittle defensively and like you know what. Whatever the reason is, I want to know it. First of all, I want to know why Ricky Poch is not playing. He did say Ricky Poch was having a half trouble to play, but he said so about Trincao and about Pedri. Trincao and Pedri are playing quite a bit. Ricky Poch is non-existent. Today, sorry, but how did you put Sergio Roberto in Alenia? And I like Sergio Roberto a lot, and I think Alenia is quite a pretty good player. But today we needed oxygen in midfield. We needed someone that, oh, okay, defense, because defensively Busquets was not existent. And I've been here trying to defend Busquets, and I still defend Busquets and say that he's not useless, that he's not finished. But he's been playing badly, and he cannot start. Why did he start today? Why did he start? Why did Frank Leal play at center back? Because it didn't work against Alaves. The problem is that Alaves get a man sent off, and we can mount the pressure on them, because Frank Leal was not playing center back against Alaves, he was mostly playing as, you know, deep role center midfielder that was filling in at center back occasionally. That today did not work because 11 against 11 against a team that is going to press you high up and is going to attack you. We, as I've mentioned a bunch of times, Frankie Young defensively is very, very brittle. Miriam Pjanic and Sergio Busquets in the midfield today was not good. If you defensively are going to be very soft, at least I want to have a player that when he has the ball at his feet, he's going to be able to hold it and he's going to be able to, you know, do something with it to transition it forward. So Messi doesn't have to drop into the double pivot to try to get the ball forward to the other players. Because that's the problem, Messi starts scoring less goals because he has to start from very, very far away from the goal. And that's the problem. Instead of starting from three quarters, he's starting from 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 midfield, and that is a huge problem in terms of him of getting him into goal scoring positions. Then you have Griezmann that can't score anything, and honestly, I don't care that I mean I wish that he would score that open goal, but I don't care that he missed it. I care more that he doesn't do anything. It's pass, it's receive and pass, receive and pass, receive and pass. Sorry, but Griezmann has to go because he earns a quite a lot of money in wages. Because if he finishes the season like this, he's going to be end up costing. We're going to have to end up letting him go for zero, for zero euros just to get him off the wage off the wage list. We need to get his wages off. We need to get you know, not necessarily. I we don't need necessarily number nine, but we need to be able to fix this team systematically. And Griezmann, sorry, but Griezmann right now is behind. Braithwaite, behind Pedri, behind Sufati, behind Coutinho, behind Lionel Messi, behind Dembélé, Trincao, even Conrad de la Fuente, if you ask me, is ahead of Griezmann right now because he's been given a plenty of opportunities, more than some of these players that I've mentioned, and he has done nothing. Pedri today tried to do a few things, wasn't his best game, and Sufati today is the player that tried to carry the team, couldn't do so, although he gave the assist for the Gerard Piquet, Heather in the second goal, you know, tried to do a few things, couldn't quite finish it off. But he'd had a pretty good performance in my books. My match is Ter Stegen. 
he did about what seven saves in this game. And uh, by the way, the Dynamo Kiev keeper, about I think it was twelve saves. That's unbelievable. That performance from him today was absolutely fantastic. This this is just his second professional game with the first team. This is his first Champions League game. He's eighteen, and you know. Considering that Dinamo Kiev, the two the two center backs, I believe this is their first season as professionals, in the in the high tier list of, of football. And Dinamo Kiev played fairly well, and they had better better players. If they had Jan Malenko, we would have been in serious trouble back in the day when they used to have Andrea Malenko. Uh, Dembele was good when he came off; like he had a shot and a, and, a, and a really nice play that you know fantastic save from the keeper. He tried to do things, didn't go, you know, wasn't as effective, but tried to do a few things. Unfortunately, we couldn't pull it off. Um, Alenia, you know, was given the minutes that no one cares about. Lingley came in and, you know, didn't change much. It's because systematically the problem is bringing more center backs and taking off more center backs doesn't mean that you're going to defend better or worse. The problem is that because your, your defensive system, not your defensive line, your defensive system absolutely sucks. That way, your the whole team sucks because the problem is that we attack very disorganized. We attack some people attack, some people defend, and you leave a huge gap in the middle where you know you have two players that are not even the best holding players in the world to do to do that kind of idea, and then you end up having troubles. Jordi Alba needs to go to the bench because it's unacceptable. One thing, one thing is that you miss. But another thing is the attitude, and the attitude today from Jordi Alba has been horrendous, for the most part. Like, I, I know that other people ha- hate, hate on Junior Fierro, but I don't know why. I think that he's quite a good player. He just maybe not had the best start at Barcelona, but can't be worse than what I've seen from Jordi Alba. The New Dez had problems in defense, we already, we all already knew that that was the case. Something that he needs to work on. He's young, let's hope that he's not going to k- kill because of it. Uh, good to have to stay him back. And it's 17 minutes in the video already. Uh, thank you guys for tuning into the live stream two days ago. Uh, subscribe to the channel and keep the notifications up because I will be hopefully doing more streams. You know, I will be occasionally dropping streams maybe once a week, twice a week, maybe every other week. Stay tuned because I will do more streams. I will talk more about football and we can, you know. Uh, have the channel grow more thank you guys for you know uh, watching the videos and comment like subscribe and I'll see you next one blaugranas